Sim started his working life at his dad's construction company in England, surrounded by generations of his own family. One day, he looked at his granddad and realized he would share the same fate if he didn't do something to change his own circumstances. He quit the next day. Now the head of Sim's empire, Steve has launched a concierge firm, a credit card, a travel agency, a magazine, an event production company, a charity, and a branding development firm. If you want to sing on stage with Journey or participate in a demolition derby, Steve's Bluefish is the concierge firm specializing in wild and exclusive experiences. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Sims. That's a nice tune, isn't it? Picked it about 10 minutes ago. All right, so. You got that little kind of brief on me. Uh, I spent the last two months confused, very confused. Still am a little bit. Um, Jason called me up and said, look, you know, we've got this mastermind event, second year. We want you to come and speak. And I said, well, that's great. You know, brilliant. So I did the, uh, the entrepreneurial two-step. And I'm sure most of you know what that is. Step one, you accept. Great, fantastic, love it, brilliant, thank you. Step two, shit, fuck, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> so... I spent about two months trying to work out what I was going to do. Um, so I told Jason, I said, I'm a bit nervous about this. His solution was to make sure I had a full bottle of Shivers whiskey waiting in my room yesterday. So I appreciate that. What he also did was pass me over to Joey to give me some advice on speaking, which was of no fucking help whatsoever. <laughs> um, so I was, I was now faced, because you know, the guy knows what he's talking about, and, and, and I don't. I am, I am proud to, to boast that my ability in doing this kind of weird and extreme stuff is far superior to my presentation skills. Um, but I wanted to find out what it was I needed to talk to you because Jason said, look, you've got to give them something to take away. You've got to tell them what it is that they can use in their day-to-day -day life. So I confronted my, my Zen master, uh, my wife, and I said to her, I said, look, you know, I've got this speech to do, so, you know, what do I talk about? So she sits in her usual unimpressed manner, and she says, you know, just, just tell, tell them what you do. So I went, oh, that's great, you know. 18 years ago, launched a concierge firm. I'm responsible for sending people into space, putting them on stage uh, with our rock stars, sending them down to the Titanic, sticking you in a Formula One car, getting a, a guitar lesson with uh, Billy Gibbons, a singing lesson with Sting, uh, the official concierge to the Grammys, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I said to her, there you go, that'll impress it, won't it? And she just kind of like rolled her eyes and had the usual you know, lack of tolerance with me. And she said, no, what you've got to do is not tell them what you've done, but tell them what you do. So it was one of those moments, like a, a kick in the left test, you suddenly think to yourself, shit, <laughs> what, what, this is deep. So I've got to work it out. What I actually do, what's my secret source that I can, can impart on people you know, far more intelligent, maybe not as good looking, but far more intelligent than me. So I realized that I don't like transactions. I don't like buying something and getting something back. That's shit. You're getting what you paid for, no one cares about that. But I do like emotions. And I didn't realize it, but in looking back, that's what I've become really good at. And someone actually said to me, it wasn't me, it was a client uh, that introduced me to someone, actually said, he coined the phrase, Sims sells smiles. That's what he does. So I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool, I'm going to use it. Um, so I just did. Um, and I realized that what I try to do is I try to create an emotion in absolutely everything I do, not just with the clients, but with the vendors as well. So when, when you think about an emotion, it's probably the greatest investment ever. Now, a show of hands in here, who's got like portfolios, pension plans, you know, investment trust, anything like that? Anyone here in a financial mind? Right, okay. So your money can do two things. It can go up or it can go down. It can't stay stationary because inflation's going to dictate it goes one of those ways. So, so those are the only two ways it can go. Beautiful thing about an emotion is it's got a life of its own and it grows. And if you think back to say your first car, 
you're going to sit there and you're going to think, oh, that was a beautiful car. I remember that. You know, my first car it was great. It was lovely. I used to roll around town with it with the boys and the girls and stuff like that. Fact is, it was a piece of shit that worked only when it wanted to. <laughs> but as Dan Sullivan said, your mind polishes the past. Now, case in point, I had a client that wanted to drive a Formula One car. So we sent him down to the poor car track down in the south of France. Um, sounds very beautiful for a start, but race tracks are nine times out of ten in the middle of freaking nowhere. So this was like some industrial area just happened to be in France, so it sounds a lot better than it was. And the day was actually quite murky, which is good when you've got your arse strapped to a rocket. You want the cooler temperatures because you can get really hot in those cockpits. Now, I heard him talking about it to someone else, and the first thing he said was, it was a beautiful sunny day in the south of France. <laughs> and, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's a different event than the one I was at, mate, but, you know, okay. And it just, they suddenly get a little bit rosier. The client that I put on stage was Sting uh, with uh, Journey. Yeah, you, know, you listen to him talk about it, and I, I've got to admit, I sometimes wonder if I was at the same event. It just gets rosier as time goes on. So if I can install an emotion, a smile, into a client when I do something, then, and, and insert it properly, that emotion's gonna grow and I'm gonna reap a huge reward out of that now, in the future, and when they refer me to a client. Because there's nothing better than having a client refer another person. So, I got to wondering, how do I actually install those kind of things? How do I actually you know, get, those, uh, get those messages across? And again, bear in mind, I do it with both vendors and I do it with clients. Because I'm not good with people, I'm not warm and fuzzy, and there's no way before any of you had ever met me would you give me your credit card or social security number. <laughs> but those are the things I get out of my clients because I do my job well. I value the relationships I had. And I remember earlier someone saying the two things you need, it was Jason, the two things you need, your network and your word. And those are the, those are the only things I have. I have no other talent whatsoever. Um, so I wanted to part onto you the kind of things that I do. I have access to anything expensive that you can afford or that you can't afford. And I can do anything. It's a big boast. But the relationships I've built, people know that I come through. But you don't have to do something expensive to impart that emotion over to someone. I'll give you a little example here. For the, uh, the, the British people in here, this is a Sunday magazine. It's a piece of crappy little magazine like in all the other Sunday publications. And here is a bunch of free envelopes from the Shangri-La. What I'm going to go, and I've got about 10 of these magazines. I've got Sky Mall, a couple of things that I had on the, on the flight over here, a couple of other London magazines. I'll probably grab something from here. I'm going to, on the way back to Los Angeles, rip out pages from here, hand write onto this envelope, and then put a little note on the piece of paper I pulled out and just put on it, Johnny, was this the play you liked? Or I know you like golf. Was this the kind of thing you like to do? And I'm going to post it. Don't have to pay for the magazine because that's free. They're all over my uh, hotel. I don't have to pay for the envelope either because, again, they love the fact that you're sending out Shangri-La or wherever you go. I've gone on from uh, a London trip and a Florence trip. I, I, I have banks and banks of these hotels, uh, envelopes. The only thing I'm paying for is a stamp. So quite simply, the client's going to receive this. And I don't just send it to clients. I send it to vendors as well. Because you know when you want something rushed through and you phone up your supplier, and your supplier says, well, we're a little bit backlogged, you'd be amazed if they get a, a bottle of wine or if they get a box of chocolates, how funnily enough, yours has just got put to the front of the queue. And that's what you need. You need people to work with you. And that's where the relationships thing. As a kid, I remember one of those classic lines that they teach you in that, that shitty business school we all, we all started with, and it says, you know, business is not personal. Don't take it personal, it's just business. Worst statement ever known to mankind. Complete and utter bullshit. Business is 100% personal. And I challenge you, is there anyone in here that would like to put their hand up and actually argue with me on that statement? Apart from Joey. Right. So when you connect with a client, make sure you hold that connection. Getting a client's hard enough. Losing a client is suicide. 
So you can actually take these, these pieces of paper and you can go further. There are people in this, in this um, room here that actually do incentives, do trips, send tickets, send uh, magazines, send books. You know, Jason apparently has got 40,000 books in Colorado. He maybe had to do a deal on a few of them. But send things to people that they weren't expending. Give someone 110% of what they were expecting from you. Now, again, that goes back to the emotion. When you actually get something from that client, the next time you want something, who are you going to go to? They say a misery attracts misery. Smiles are much greater. If you've got a happy client, you've got a miserable client, which one's going to phone you? I had a client of mine uh, that invited me over to Ginza in Japan a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know what he was thinking, but he took me to a comedy club. Now, my Japanese is only slightly better than my American. So we went to this Japanese comedy club, and we all sat there in a circle, and we got all the drinks there, and this, this little fella gets up, starts doing his bit. I couldn't understand a freaking thing he was saying. Not one iota. I was at least wondering if it was going to be an English comedy club. But I don't know if he thought he was having a giggle with me or something, but I couldn't hear anything. It took about 30 minutes before I had tears coming out of my eyes, because the whole euphoria of everyone smiling and laughing was intoxicating. Now, I came away from there, and I'm supposed to be going back to Japan in about another four months, and I'm going to take my family. I've already told my daughter I'm taking her to this comedy club. Now, we're not going to know what they're saying anymore, but you just, it's not any better, but you just want to go because there's nothing people want more than smiles. And they want that interaction. And it's the drug of choice. People want to be happy. And if they can get something from you that shows that you care, shows that you're interested with them, shows that you've got their best uh, cares at mind, then they're going to come back to you. Again, surely that's the, the whole point of having a relationship, isn't it? But one thing I've noticed, and I work with a, 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 lot, of, a lot of you guys. You know, I, I have a lot of clients in here. Some of them I like. And you come to me and you ask me to look after your clients. And sometimes it's a case of, I want to send them to the Oscar party at the, uh, at the Elton John or I want to send them to the Grammys. Or it's always big picture stuff. It doesn't need to be big to be impactful. It could be a cupcake. It could be a recipe book that you were in a restaurant, and the chef signed it. And you know they like it. I did that in London. I went to a great restaurant. There were some books outside. The chef had signed them. 20 bucks a book. So I just bought five books. They're signed, and I'm going to send them off. My client's going to receive them. They're going to call me up. They're going to thank me. These people that get these envelopes, they're going to get it. For a start, it's handwritten. Secondly, it's got Shangri-La Toronto on it. Curiosity is going to get 99% of my clients opening up that. And they're going to know that while I was working in Canada doing the worst presentation to mankind, I was thinking of them. And that's it. That's all I have. You've just got to, there you are. Whoa, 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 calm yourself. I want you, because most of you that I've spoken to, you're flying, you're traveling, and I know you're going to jump on the plane and you're going to, you know, oh, yeah, I check things, I work and stuff like this. When you go back to your hotel, all I'm asking is that you grab a handful of those envelopes and you try that little thing. And if you don't want to send it to a client, send it to a vendor. And you'll be amazed at the response you get when they know that you've been thinking of, they've been thinking of, uh, sorry, you've been thinking of them while you're doing this. And as Jason said before, this, this room, I'm so honored and proud to be in this room of these one percenters. Your clients and your vendors need to know that you were in this room. You were here. And even by being here and it being so powerful to be here, you still thought of them. So take a photograph or just send them a note. Send them that because they're going to phone you up and say, why did I get a letter from Shangri-La? Oh, I was at this event. And it was so wonderful. And what I've learned is going to impact our relationship even more. So again, you're adding more value, more emotion. So give more to your clients and vendors than they expect. That's it.